Like any project that you're working on, having the right tools is essential to getting the job done. In this tutorial, we are going to use Postman. Postman is a RESTful API testing tool that allows you to send data and check responses from your RESTful API, which is perfect for what we're working on, a RESTful API. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through how to set up our route collection and show off some of the things that we can do with Postman to make your development of your API so much easier. Let's get started. The first step to using Postman is to download the tool. So if you head over to www.postman.com, you can kind of explore what they have, uh, some of their features, you know, automated testing, design and mock, workplaces. Uh, those are tools that you can do if you're developing with a team or if you're developing solo, it doesn't matter, it's extremely useful. But once you head over to Postman, you can create an account and log in. And you can either use Postman through the web, or I like to use Postman as a native app so I can easily um, go through and have my code on one side of the screen if I'm doing the debugging, and ha have my request on the other side of the screen. So e either way that you'd like to use Postman, both of them work. So to get the app, head over to postman.com slash downloads, and you can download the OSS, OSX app if you're on um, Mac, and I think they, have a, they definitely have a Windows version as well. Yeah, X32, X64, they even have a Linux version. Uh, if you're doing local development, I would recommend downloading the app because then you can reference your local URLs. If you're testing the API that's already pushed to a uh, web accessible server, you can just launch Postman in your browser and start hitting uh, your API with that. Now the power of Postman, and it's free for pretty much everything that you need to do as a solo dev, uh, they, they allow you to create workspaces and you can share those workspaces, you can share them publicly, um, you can share your collections, so like if you have a group of routes and a bunch of parameters that you use for testing, you can share them with other people. When you get into the team stuff, though, it starts to um, you start you get charged for that, which is totally worth it if you're doing your team stuff. Um, that's because you know you can synchronize and really work together on making, you know, monitoring your API, testing your API, working with other devs, and making sure your responses are always accurate. So once we have Postman downloaded, we will open up the app, and I, I've been in Postman. Uh, before, so I'll just guide you through some of the uh, features of it. Um, they do update this app kind of often with the UI of it, so it may look slightly different, but the basics should be the same. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some collections. So once you've downloaded the app, you'll see a lot of information about your Postman account, some helpful guides on how to get in into and start using Postman. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a workspace. Now a workspace is going to be our project. So with our project um, of Roast, we're going to create a workspace called Roast. So under the Workspaces drop-down, click the drop-down and do New Workspace. In here, you can add team members, invite members and groups, uh, give it a name and a summary. All we're going to do is name this Roast and we're going to call it Testing the Roast, Roast and Brew Coffee API. So this should be a quick little workspace that we can add, and I'm going to be the only user on here. Um, this will just speed things up, but you can, you know, as you're working your project, I'm sure you'll have multiple devs, maybe share it with some project managers, uh, people that are involved on the project, you can invite them in here. Then we're going to click Create Workspace, and you'll see your workspace. Now, there's a whole bunch more that comes up uh, when you create a workspace. There's collections, there's ways to create requests. Uh, we'll, we'll step through that process right now. Once you've created your workspace, the first thing I do is I create collection of routes. So what a collection is, a groups related request. So if you think of Roast, you have uh, cafes, you have companies, you have brew methods, um, you have uh, amenities, those in our API are the endpoints and those would make a perfect collection. You can do, you can read from cafes, you can create cafes, you can 
uh, edit a cafe, you can see an individual cafe. Those are a collection because there's like five or six routes associated with a cafe. So a workspace is your entire API, a collection is a group of related routes. So let's just create our first collection here. So you can either click create collection on the left sidebar or from the drop down, you can import one if you are working on a team and already have one created, or you can do one from scratch. I always by default click create collection and now we can start creating our collection. So within here, uh, there's a ton of different options for your collection as well. You can have authentication, uh, you can have some pre-request scripts, you can have tests, you can have environment variables. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to do no authentication and just test some of our public API. In the next Postman tutorial, we'll show you how to make Postman work with Laravel Sanctum. And then you can do the authentication testing. So for now, now that we have our new collection, the only thing that we need to do is start creating our request. Before we start creating requests, which is the next step, and we're going to do that right here, I always like to name the collection, just so when we add multiple resources and we test all those endpoints, you can easily find out which ones you're doing. So for this tutorial, we're going to just run through the cafe's endpoint with, all the, or with a few of the different uh, routes that you can hit that don't require authentication but it's good to have these groups. So under here, if you hover over a new collection, there's a little pencil icon that pops up. Click that and type in cafes. Now you have a nice cafes endpoint. I mean, you can even go further and just be like API v1 cafes endpoint. Now you have everything nice and, e nice and organized and ready to house your endpoints that you will be that we'll be testing. Okay, so we have our collection made, we have our cafe's endpoint uh, collection named, which makes it nice and organized. Let's add a request. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a basic get request, and this will go off to our actual production API. For now, we're not using any authentication. We are requesting this as uh, like a guest user or anyone who wants to, um, you know, consume our API but doesn't want to create a token. Uh, like I said, in the next video, we'll talk about how to make Laravel Sanctum work with Postman. But for now, let's just get started so you can kind of see the full process of creating a workspace, creating a collection, adding a request to your collection. So right now, let's name our request. We'll just call this uh, get and it'll be cafes and we'll just do api v1 cafes i like to name it based off the http verb the resource and then the url it makes it really explicit so when you come in here we're doing a get request and it's going to our cafes resource and the url of the cafes so now we enter the request url so roast and brew has two different urls it has the front end which is roast and brew coffee and has the api side so what we're going to do is we're going to do HTTPS api.roastandbrew.coffee api v1 cafes. So what this will do is hit our API endpoint version 1 with the cafes resource. Now we're not going to pass any parameters to this right now uh, since this is just for basic how to use Postman with your API, but you can also query, you can add uh, search functionality, you can test how your search results come back, you add all your query parameters, and add authorizations, headings, headers as well. So when you have this entered, let's click send. So it's sending the request, and if you look down here, it looks like it worked just as we imagined. Here are our cafes, they're paginated just as we expected. We should have the current page. We have the data. This is a pretty format. You can view the raw format, which is just basic JSON, you know, like not format is what you'd expect. The pretty format is nice and easy to read. Preview, well, we're not returning HTTP or HTML, so it really doesn't do much. And visualizers, we're not going to get into visualizing right now. So just look at the pretty request and you can scroll through and see all of the 
uh, cafes that have been returned from your API. See, this is really nice for testing and uh, seeing how your endpoints react and what is returned without having to do any crazy console inspections. Um, you can pass things really easily to, through here. And like I said, share with the team so everyone's on the same page. So to give an example of a nut, adding a query parameter, our API endpoint for cafes allows us to search. So we can search through brew methods, drink options, um, just basic name search, where it will search uh, the company name or the location name. Um, this is how we structured our search endpoint. And so let's just test this real quick uh, so we can see the power of Postman and some of the features you can do. So let's find Ruby Coffee Roasters out of Nelsonville, Wisconsin, one of my favorite coffee roasters. So our query params are what will be appended to our Git request. Uh, these are usually what you'd imagine to be like the question mark. You know, you'd have uh, question mark, name, equals, value, and those would be passed with the Git request. This is a nice, uh, simple way to do it in Postman because it, you know, it's a nice form. You don't have to worry about the formatting. It'll take care of all the URL encoding and anything else you want to do. So let's just add search. You see right up here we have the question mark and set the value to be Ruby. So we should expect if our ca cafe's search endpoints working correctly, a company named Ruby Coffee Roasters out of Amherst Junction, Wisconsin. Let's see what we get. So current page one, we get an ID. Here's a tasting room. This is a cafe and the company is Ruby Coffee Roasters. So it's Nelsonville, Wisconsin. Amherst Junction is close by. Um, so this is how you can validate that your search endpoints or any other query parameters that you want added to your Git request return the correct information by testing a live API. Um, I like to go through and remove these so they're easy to come unless you're building something that you know is heavily utilized as a certain search parameter and you want that to happen all the time. I usually when creating my collections and then creating the requests within Postman keep it as basic and simple as possible so we don't have any lingering data that we don't want when we're testing and then if we want to test a specific feature we come in and add that right away. And you can even add a description. That's how powerful Postman is. is. You can add a description that describes what each key and parameter is doing for your documentation. So for now, I'm just going to hit Command S. We have our cafe's endpoint saved. Now, anytime I want to test against our API, I can add a couple keys and their values and see what search results we get down here. So the power of Postman really makes this... Uh, it really makes API development actually kind of fun. So in this tutorial, we're just sending a couple Git requests. Um, this is because we're unauthenticated and we haven't added our uh, access token to our request in Postman yet. And we'll do that in another video. This is just gonna kind of get your feet wet with Postman and see what it can do. So before we uh, end this tutorial, the other feature that I really love about Postman is the ability to document your request. So if you come over here on the top right, there's a little file icon that says documentation when you hover over it. If you click on that, you can add documentation by clicking the little pencil icon and you can type in markdown for your request. I find this extremely helpful. You can share it with your teammates if you're using a Postman Premium account or just for yourself to make sure that you have everything where you want it and you remember what, what you did. I mean, I've come back to code so many times and had no idea what I've written. It's nice to document this. So for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to add, you know, request, endpoint. I mean, all this stuff's available, but it just makes things nice and easy to read when you're glancing over it. Dot coffee. Cafes, finality, should hit the search endpoint for our cafes resource. We get cafes and 
you know, it's pretty basic and honestly it's pretty generic, but as you dive in and you start adding post requests for each key or each variable, you know, is should be defined, this documentation comes in really handy. So I'll just click save. Now we have beautiful formatted documentation and you can actually view your complete collections documentation as well. So as you start adding more collections, more resources, uh, you can view the documentation, click open request. Now you can actually modify your request. I find that extremely powerful. For me, documentation is a make it or break it, whether I use a library, a framework, or a, really any program or computer related application. If I don't know how to use it and have to guess at it, probably not going to use it. So write your documentation, super handy. So that's a basic run through on Postman. Uh, the next tutorial we will talk about how to add authorization to a collection so you can submit posts and put requests and create data within your endpoint. Sometimes you may want to run this through a staging URL. Uh, we'll do it through our production URL uh, just to show you how it goes. Don't worry, we're not going to create anything we don't want to create. It's just a cool tutorial. Um, if you have any more questions or have any need any more detailed information on Postman and you've purchased the complete package, head over to community.serversideup.net and if you scroll down to the bottom, we have a book ultimate guide to building APIs and SPAs for those that have purchased the, the complete package. Hop on there and we would be happy to give you a hand. Talk to you soon.